this two-dimensional bubble casts a one-dimensional shadow. A three-dimensional bubble casts a two-dimensional shadow. A fourth-dimensional bubble casts a three-dimensional shadow. That was a clip of Finn the Human exploiting the three dimensions we can experience, length, width, and height, using shadows. However, the fourth dimension is just a little bit harder to see. But using shadows, we can start to learn how to visualize 4D. Shadows are created by light passing through a three-dimensional object, projecting a two-dimensional version of itself behind that object. For example here, my three-dimensional hand casts a two-dimensional hand shadow. Speaking of projections, projectors and shadows work the same way, taking light in through a lens, casting a 2D image of a 3D space onto the wall. As you can see watching this video right now, I myself am a projection. I am a flat image. I am I'm like a mime stuck in a cage right now. I can't, I'm not real. Even though the space I am occupying is three-dimensional, it is still only a 2D screen as you see it. This is because any being of any dimension, whether it be us 3D humans, 2D flat Stanley, or fourth dimensional god of spaghetti, they will perceive their dimension one dimension lower than they actually exist in. Your view, your eyeballs, see things in 2D, like a camera. And that's why we have POV shots in movies because cameras are able to replicate what we see and put it onto a flat screen therefore proving our vision is a flat screen it is a series of rapidly updating two-dimensional images that make us think we're in 3d like a flip book those old flip books you had as kids where you would draw the things like captain underpants now you may argue how did what does this have to do with 4d what is the fourth dimension we have length width height what's the next one spiral i don't know time, time. It's time. Don't click away. It's I swear to God. This is science Wikipedia. It's time Remember how I said we experience a world in a rapidly updating series of 2d images That's a fancy way of saying time we experience the flow of time and that's how we're able to exist If the world was just 3d length with height, we wouldn't have time anything. We would just be stuck in one place this is boring as fuck, right? Yeah, exactly. So thank you for the fourth dimension that we can't see but we can feel time we ourselves are on a set timeline that we cannot deviate from. You cannot go forward in time, you cannot go back in time. Where you are is what you get, so you better enjoy it. You cannot see versions of yourself from the past or future, but a fourth dimensional being can. A fourth dimensional being can see every single moment on your timeline. If you want to get really trippy with it, imagine every single moment in your life overlapping at the exact same time. Just like this music video from OK Go. The video is trippy, right? And even though the effect is able to make you see all the different versions of yourself at once, you still can't interact with them. A fourth dimensional being can pick any moment in this video and then change something and that would affect the rest of the video entirely. But what would a fourth dimensional being interacting with our world look like? Meet Jerry. Jerry here lives in a two-dimensional world, represented by this piece of paper. It's a plane of existence. If I were to take this 3D dice block and have it pass through Jerry's 2D world, all we would see is a wooden square. This is because the cross-section of a cube is a square, a cross-section being a 2D slice of a 3D object. Jerry being a two-dimensional being would only see his world in 1D, and he would only see the exact side of the dice facing him, aka just the middle of that five dot there. Now, that's being able to perceive the second dimension. What about the fourth one? Now, let's use what we just learned and go up a notch. A fourth dimensional cube, called a tesseract, not that one, passing through our third dimensional world will look something like this. A cube simply appearing out of thin air and then disappearing as it came. As the cube gets pushed through our timeline, we only see a singular cross section. Our timeline is like a flat piece of paper and the cube is passing through it. It is bigger than the timeline itself. And that's why we get the exact same effect as we saw with Jerry, because a three dimensional cube has a two dimensional cross section of a square and a fourth dimensional tesseract has a three dimensional cross section of a cube. This was very confusing to make, but please consider subscribing once we hit a 100,000 subscribers. I'm going to capitalize the N in my name. It's going to be a big day. Thank you so much. Have a nice night.